Good morning and welcome to this virtual church service at Maple Grove United Church. It is terrific to have you with us watching remotely. Whenever and wherever you're sharing in this service, we give thanks for your time and your worship and pray that this opportunity to connect with your faith brings you closer to God. A special thanks to the chancel choir under the direction of Dr. Deborah Henry, accompanied by Ian Sadler. Thanks to our volunteer, Pat Thompson, who will be reading scripture and prayers for today's service. As well, thanks for the technical support of John Duffin and Joan Vinyl Cox. Enjoy the service and God bless. As we come together, we acknowledge this land called Turtle Island that was inhabited long before the settlers arrived and displaced the indigenous peoples and their communities. We are gathered on the traditional territories of many different First Nations peoples. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. We acknowledge and give thanks for their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. We make this acknowledgement to remember the healing work that is before us, which will, we pray, lead us into reconciliation with our indigenous brothers and sisters. Let us prepare our hearts and homes for worship by listening to the choral prelude on Sweet Jesus by J. S. Bach. We come this morning full of ourselves, our concerns, our plans, our opinions, our schedules. In this moment, help us empty our minds, the relentless I, and make space for you. Enable us to put down our priorities, to set aside our assumptions and schemes. Open our hearts to recognize your love in action in our lives. Reassure us of your divine vision and let us rest in your unending care. Let us pray. Sustaining and encouraging God, thank you for being always by our side. Encourage us to turn to you every day and to seek your guidance for our lives. Slow us when we try to rush ahead. Prompt us when we delay and hesitate. Steady us when we stumble. Although we cannot always understand this world, remind us that you delight in each one of us and will strengthen and support us to grow in faith and service. Amen. 
Let us lift up our voices in song, renewing our faith and strengthening our relationship with God through God's gift of music and praise. The opening hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me? Scripture today is from Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 15. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we were supposed, we, we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. My husband Stuart and I decided very early on in our relationship that we got along best when he drove and I provided the navigation. But even this division of labour wasn't without its challenges. A typical conversation might go something like this me. So at the next set of traffic lights, turn left. Stuart, now, is that left 
or the other left. At which point I would check the map and usually acknowledge that I meant the other left, which you might also refer to as right. Clearly, my directions need checking along the way. But what about God's directions? When you think about the course of your life, have you ever wanted to ask, okay, God, do you mean left or the other left? Because believing in God does not exempt us from the twists and turns and frustrations of human existence. And many of us struggle and experience times when we're not clear about the direction of our lives, maybe questioning or doubting God's presence in our lives. Why isn't God listening? What is God up to in my life? It's reassuring to know that we aren't the first to feel this way. But perhaps it's surprising to read about Paul, the great evangelist for the early church, also having these problems. We're used to thinking about Paul as authoritative and a leader, the successful founder of churches across the Eastern Mediterranean. So it's somewhat unexpected to read this morning's scripture and discover Paul and his companions roaming about the region that is now Turkey with nothing at all working out for them. The geography might not be familiar to us, but Paul's journey that we read about is, quite frankly, a shambles. To put it in Canadian terms, it's roughly the same as heading from Toronto east to Ottawa, then turning west and going to Sudbury before trying to go north, say to Val d'Or in Quebec, and then backtracking and heading even further west over to Thunder Bay. Paul is full of ideas about where he should go to teach about Jesus and God doesn't agree with any of them. Every time Paul comes up with a new destination, the Holy Spirit prevents them from making any progress. For Paul, full of passion and enthusiasm for spreading the word of Christ, this is a frustrating and disheartening setback. Why isn't God going along with my plan? What is God up to? Well, it turns out a lot, because as this reading indicates, God shows the way. As soon as Paul tunes in to what God wants him to do, things start falling into place. Instead of careering all over Turkey, Paul and his companions now follow the vision he received and head west to Macedonia and to the city of Philippi, a church that Paul later writes to, his letter to the Philippians, and which gives Paul support during his ministry. Big things happen here because God shows the way. It's a humbling passage for an independent, self-reliant human to read, because at every turn, it is God that makes things happen, not humankind. All the key plot shifts are driven by God. This is true of God's guidance to Paul and his mission and it is also true of Lydia's experience. The book of Acts tells us, the Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly. Again, this isn't down to Paul. God shows the way and his love and grace reaches out to Lydia and enables her faith. 
God directs Paul and Lydia and the growth of the church in Europe. God shows the way, which is a comfort. It's not only up to us. God is directing and guiding us today, just as he did for Paul and Lydia and the early Christians. God shows us the way. This was powerfully brought home to me when I was studying my first New Testament class. I discovered that the closer you look at something, the harder you have to think. And there are a series of apocalyptic passages in the Gospels for telling Jesus immediate return. And the more I studied them, the more questions I had. I felt as though my faith had lost a key foundation and suddenly the whole thing began to wobble. And in the midst of this uncertainty, God took charge. Before COVID, I commuted on the GO train for nearly three years, happily tucked away in the quiet zone, usually writing prayers, sermons, essays for school. And in that time, only one person has ever spoken to me in the midst of my uncertainty. The passenger next to me saw me working on a sermon and felt encouraged to speak. I'm struggling with my faith, he said. I still believe in God, but there's so much that's wrong with the world. We talked for a while, then went our separate ways. I don't know if I said much that helped him, but the very occurrence of our conversation brought me immense relief. God heard and acknowledged my uncertainty and it was all right. And I was not alone. God showed me the way. God didn't speak to me through a vision such as the one Paul received, more in a dream as many others in the Bible experienced. No, God spoke to me through an everyday commuter on his way to work. And maybe God spoke to that commuter too. Maybe that commuter went away thinking, it's all right, God shows the way. God is showing me that in the midst of this crazy world, there are others still acting in faith. Maybe. I'll never know, and I don't need to. God shows the way. Perhaps we have fewer visions in this day, but God is still active in our lives. God opens our hearts just as he opened Lydia's, and God gives us guidance just as he did for Paul. God speaks to us through our friends and through strangers. God brings about ideas and connections and reassurance and guidance. The Holy Spirit is vibrantly at work in the world, shaping our lives to recognize God's presence and purpose and care for each one of us. This is true for a church community as much as for an individual and as you head collectively into a new chapter for Maple Grove, a period of discovery and connection, of relationship building and evolution, remember the unpredictable ways in which God can work in the world and trust that God shows the way. We are called 
as the popular affirmation states, to let go and let God. To embrace the Holy Spirit in our lives and be open to where God is guiding us. Listening to God remains our greatest challenge. Here, I find it helps not to pray in terms of outcomes or results, specific things I think I want, but rather to ask for clarity and direction, for strength, for endurance, and for patience, especially for patience, and to trust that the God guiding Paul and Lydia cares as much about each one of us, that he is looking out for us and working in the world to show us the way. As Paul himself later wrote to the Romans, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. So we trust God and love God and trust that God loves us. Praise be to God.
Labyrinth by Rafe Vaughan Williams, played by Ron McKee on trumpet. We come now to our offering. Maple Grove United Church remains ever grateful for your gifts. The offerings you continue to make through your envelope givings, par or one-time donations, or by using the Donate Now button on the website. We are grateful that God guides each one of us with our giving and how we are called to share our time, our talents and our financial resources. We pray that we are open to God's purpose for the mission and outreach of this congregation and that as we are able, we give in support of this work. Let us dedicate our offering together now in prayer. Patient and empowering God, bless these gifts and use them for your purpose in the world. Bless our own gifts and inspire us to see your path for our service. Guide us to let hope prevail where despair has taken hold, to let compassion grow in the place of judgment to let peace flourish and heal the fractures of the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We bring now before God the cares of our hearts and the concerns of the world. Let us pray. Loving God, be with us in the darkness and in the light as we offer all of ourselves our whole selves to you in prayer. You see our desires and fears. Nothing is hidden from you. Guide us through your teaching and craft our hopes to follow your word. Sustain us when we waver. You hear our expectations and disappointments. You patiently bear our frustration and rage. Shape our aims and actions to recognise your will for us. Open our hearts to your presence in our lives. We are humbled by our notions of possibilities and limitations. Remind us that your vision stretches wider and deeper than we can imagine. Affirm in us that nothing is too wonderful for the Lord. In times of joy and gladness, evoke in us wonder and gratitude. Help us worship your presence. In times of doubt and anxiety, bring us comfort and resilience. Help us worship your presence. In times of ordinary and routine, nourish our faith and fulfil us. Help us worship your presence. We ask your blessing on the week ahead. Be with us and guide our steps. All this we ask in Jesus' name, who walks with us, strengthens and sustains us. Amen. We pray now the words that Jesus, our teacher, showed us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Sing now our closing hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, Voices United, number 651.
May God's love guide and protect and strengthen you in all things. May God show you the way. Amen. service. Please join us again next Sunday for more Zoom worship. God bless and have a wonderful week.